what does this Navy attack jet, this supersonic Air Force bomber, and this 600 mile per hour commercial airliner all have in common? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. By request, special thanks to General Electric Aviation Engineer John Serrata for the suggestion of the topic for this presentation. Now, if you said that two of these three aircraft were built by Convair, you would be correct. But they're also all powered by the General Electric J-79 turbojet. Product of the Flight Propulsion Division of General Electric in the Evandale, Ohio and Lynn, Massachusetts production facilities. The jet age in the United States began in October 1942 with the first flight of the experimental Bell XP-59 era comet powered by General Electric turbojet engines. Since that time, General Electric has continued to play a leading role in the development of jet propulsion, and by the mid-1960s had produced nearly 50,000 jet engines, which had logged more than 50 million hours in flight. By 1965, more than half of the world's total flight time recorded at speeds above Mach 2 was flown in General Electric-powered high-performance aircraft. This wealth of flight experience resulted in proven and reliable turbine engines for commercial airliners, helicopters, military fighters, bombers, attack aircraft, executive jets, and even one-of-a-kind experimental prototypes. At the end of this video, we're going to show you some surprising non-aviation vehicles powered by General Electric turbines as well. Things were different back in the 1960s, and this is a two-page ad seen in all the major magazines touting the new J-79, which pays off in speed. Engine was unveiled to the public in Washington, D.C., June 12, 1957. And to give you an idea of the size of this power plant, Look at the two figures here and look at the engine and compare it to the two figures here. This is the General Electric IA, a uh, license-built engine uh, based on the Whittle engine in uh, England. And that was applied to this airplane, as mentioned, the Bell XP-59, seen here on the ground in its official uh, top-secret guise, complete with fake balsa wood propeller. The engine's covered and uh, really giving no clue as to what the airplane really looked like. The IA engine evolved into the J-31, which produced 2,000 pounds of thrust each and had a time between overhaul of three hours. The uh, engine evolved to the J-31, uh, 2,000 pounds used in the Ryan Fireball, a hybrid prop and jet aircraft and the allison ge j33 allison took over the production contract at this point and the j33 was used in a number of aircraft uh but mainly the lockheed t33 shooting star trainer now equipped with an afterburner the j33 produced 7500 pounds of thrust and this was used on the Convair xf92a america's first delta wing airplane and you can see the pronounced extension of the rear fuselage housing the afterburner. Republic's F-84 Thunderjet prototype, powered by the Allison J-35, producing 4,000 pounds of thrust. And then came the J-47, which was the first 5,000-pound class turbojet engine. Used in the F-86 Sabre, the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, and the Martin XB-51 Trijet Bomber. But for this episode, we're going to be uh, focusing on the J-79. Uh, the first flight of a J-79 was under a North American EB-45 Tornado test bed with a retractable nacelle like, you, like the one you see here. That flight occurred on May 20th, 1955. For accuracy, the EB-45 in this photograph is shown carrying a Curtis Wright J-67, but it was the same configuration. Now, whenever we get into specifications, this is always kind of quicksand because if you flew these airplanes, if you worked on these airplanes, you may have different numbers than what I'm showing here. 
But full disclosure, these are General Electric provided specifications. And let's take a look at some of the different kinds of airplanes. Let's start with jet fighters. The J-79 in the Air Force version, flown in the Lockheed F-104 and uh, McDonnell F-4 Phantom. The Lockheed XF-104 was the prototype which first flew with a Wright J-65. And this is going to be the first of three different airplanes that all started with J-65s and evolved to the J-79, although some were experimental. The production configuration Lockheed F-104A used the J-79-3. And then there was this machine. This is my photo of the week. I love this picture. It's the Grumman F-11F-1F Super Tiger, the second of our airplanes that uh, first started their careers with Wright J-65s and then upgraded to the J-79, although this particular airplane did not go into production. This one did, however, and that's the McDonnell F-4H, first version of the Phantom. That became the F-4B for the Navy and Marines, F-4C for the Air Force. And then there was this machine, the North American A3J Vigilante, originally an attack bomber, and then morphed into a photo reconnaissance aircraft, the RA-5C. Now, I'm including this photo just because it's so cool, but the airplane never flew with an armament load like you see here. But it was a promo shot for North American. Uh, kudos for a nice try. The A3J original designation was... Uh, an amazing airplane, low and fast on the deck. The RA-5C was considered the Navy's ultimate high-speed photo recon carrier-based aircraft. Then there was the F-21 Kafir, which uh, stands for Lion. And that was powered by an Israeli-built Bedeck GE J-79. This was used uh, for U.S. forces as an aggressor airplane, uh, flying target for uh, Top Gun and uh, Red Flag maneuvering. For commercial airliners, the beautiful Convert 880 and the 990 used the CJ805 family, uh, 880 using the straight turbojet version, dash three seen on top, 990s uh, using the dash 23 turbofan, aft turbofan seen on the bottom. Now here's your bar bed question. What, air, what airliner had the most names in uh, a one-year period? Well, this started as the Converse Skylark, became the Golden Arrow. And then they said, well, wait a minute, it flies 600 miles an hour. We'll call it the Converse 600. And someone said, wait a minute, how, how many feet per second does an airplane cover at 600 miles an hour? And the answer was 880. So they wind up with the Converse 880. And these are the beautiful slim uh, nacelles on the straight J79 turbojet. CJ805. The 990, uh, the 880's big brother, got uh, 100 numbers higher. And this was uh, considered the world's fastest commercial airliner before the Concorde. Uh, you see the AFFAN uh, CJ805-23 uh, AFFAN turbo fans on the pylons, plus two uh, speed pods, uh, Whitcomb um, shock cones, as they were called, uh, on each wing trailing edge, and this mitigated the uh, shock wave at that speed along the boundary layer of the wing. Uh, primary user in the United States was American Airlines. Uh, those uh, shock cones doubled as fuel tanks. You can see the American jet jettisoning fuel from the outboards in the inset. And in Europe, uh, primary users were SAS and Swiss Air. Then there was this airplane, the Caravel Santa Maria, which originally came to the U.S. as a demo uh, in an intended cross-marketing campaign with Douglas that never came to pass. But General Electric uh, used the airplane. In the inset photo at top, you see it equipped with the original Rolls-Royce Avon power plants. On the bottom, the CJ80523, same as the 990, but in a two-stage nacelle. TWA uh, had ordered the Mark 10, as it was called. And uh, unfortunately, the airline was going through some very tough financial times. Uh, they were already uh, considering the Boeing 727, which had Pratt engines that would integrate better into its fleet. And so the TWA Caravelle never came to be. As for guided missiles, 
Here's the third in our series on original J-65 aircraft. It's the Vought Regulus. The original version was equipped with landing gear so it could be recovered after test flights, the SMN-9, powered by Wright J-65s. Here's a better picture of the Regulus for you. And then this version, the 9A, uh, was ground launched with a solid rocket booster, and this was equipped with the GE J-79. Supersonic bombers. Now, this is really where the engine came into its own. Started with the B-58 Hustler, America's first, actually the world's first supersonic bomber in 1956. And take a look at this airplane. This is from the 305th Bomb Wing at Bunker Hill Air Force Base, Indiana. And uh, look at the combination fuel and weapon pod on the center line under the fuselage. Compare it to this. This is an engine test bed, uh, B-58, carrying a General Electric J-93. This was to be the power plant for the XB-70 North American Valkyrie, a triple sonic uh, bomber that never saw production. But the B-70 did fly, and it uh, reached a speed of Mach 3.06 in 1965, and it was the largest airplane ever to fly at Mach 3. This photo gives you an idea of the massive size of the airplane and the engines. Uh, there were six total, and here's a, an engine change. And whether it was coming or going, it was a formidable shape in the sky. Now, this led to the supersonic transport in the late 60s. I should mention the B-70 first flew in 1964. And the J-93 evolved to the GE-4. J-93 was a 30,000-pound class turbojet. GE-4 was a 60,000-pound thrust class engine. And you see there the mock-up for the Boeing 2707. There's a view looking up from the ground. You can see, again, the massive size of this airplane. It began as a variable geometry wing 2707 series 100 and wound up as a fixed wing 2707 300. However, uh, due to political pressure and a number of other factors, uh, these airplanes uh, never uh, left the mock-up stage. But Boeing was building a different airplane in 1971, and that was this machine. Uh, this is a Boeing 747-400, the last version of the original design. And this was powered by General Electric CF 6-80 C2 engines at 62,000 pounds thrust each. So when we think of the J-79, uh, it's usually involved in, in fighters. But uh, did you know that there were maritime ships and land speed record cars powered by this engine? Let's take a look. At top, we have the HS Denison, a maritime ship powered by the uh, uh, marine version of the T-58 turbine. The USS Plainview, built by Lockheed, had twin J-79s. And these were air, uh, airplanes. These were ships that flew above the water and reached speeds as high as 65 knots. These were Bonneville speed record cars, powered by J-79s. The Spirit of America, by Craig Breedlove, and Art Orphan's, Orphan's Green Monster, both set official sanctioned uh, land speed records. Uh, the two cars on the bottom, the North American Eagle fashioned out of an F-104 and the Advanced Spirit of America Shell S LSRV uh, did attain those speeds but did not uh, make official records. So the J-79, General Electric's Mach 2 turbojet, a significant power plant. And there you have it, a look at uh, an amazing time in American and world aviation history, and how General Electric contributed to the advancement of commercial and military aviation. Special thanks to the great people and institutions that uh, make these presentations possible. And thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't subscribed, we'd love having you on board. Until next time, take care. <laughs>